Amen. You guys all right? Can I get a good amen? Amen. Find your Bible tonight. Turn with me to Matthew, the 15th chapter. I'll be a second before I get there. Matthew chapter 15. We've been on a series called The Gospel. And uh, the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 1 verse 16. He said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the euangelon. That's that Greek word euangelon. It means good news, good message. He said, I'm not ashamed of the, of the good news. For it is, the good news is the power of God unto salvation. For everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then to the Greek. The Apostle Paul said, I'm not ashamed of this gospel. And this gospel brings salvation. We've, we've, we've spent two weeks talking about those words. And that word salvation is an all-inclusive word. It's a word that means it's just not saved and going to heaven. I'm thankful for that tonight. Amen. And I'm never belittling that or thinking less of that. That's not what this is about. But the gospel and, and salvation is more than just punching our ticket to go to heaven. Amen. And if we've made salvation that, we've missed the point. Je- Listen, if, if, if it was just about going to heaven, Jesus should have just came on down, hit us with the ball pin hammer, and we should have went on, went on to be with him. Right? Even Jesus said, I didn't t- I, you know, I'm not taking them out of the world. Right? They're in the world, but not of it. I'm not asking you to take them from this. I'm just going to, I'm going to ask you to protect them. I'm going to ask you to help them. Amen. So, this word salvation, it means deliverance, healing, preservation from danger. It's an all-encompassing word. Everything that Jesus purchased for us, amen, is in this salvation and in this good news. So the good news to a person that's not saved is that you can be saved. The good news to someone that needs healing is you can be healed. Amen. The good news for someone that's poor, you don't have to be poor anymore. Amen. Prosperity is a part of the gospel. I didn't say Rolex watches, I said prosperity. And If you have more than enough tonight, you're prosperous, you're a rich man. Amen. Amen. So I want, as we've been talking over the last few weeks, we've been talking about the gospel and it's particularly about healing. That healing is in the gospel. Healing is, is in the gospel. And I need to make sure that I know how to receive healing. And that's really what I want to talk about tonight is how do I receive healing? I would be selling this message series sort of short if I didn't actually teach you this. How do I receive healing for myself? But in Matthew chapter 15, amen. Matthew chapter 15, let's look at right here in verse 21. And it says this, Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. And he answered her not a word. I think this is very interesting. This is the Lord. He doesn't answer her. Now the reason being, I don't want to spend a whole long time with this, but the reason being, you know why that is? Because she was a Canaanite. She was a Syrophoenician woman. She was someone that, that uh, she had no covenant with God and she was borrowing a phrase that the Jews knew. Because to the Jews, that's what they called him. Jesus Son of David, have mercy on me. That was covenant language, covenant terminology, covenant talk. And he wanted to know what was really in her heart. What are you doing? You borrowing that phrase? Are you borrowing that phrase? Now we'll read on there. And he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him saying, Send her away for she cries out after us. And he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, what? (laughs) She dropped the son of David and said, I just need help. Now Now he's getting to her heart. Now he's finding out what's really inside of her heart. Come on, somebody. 
You can come to church, you can pretend church all you want to. You can borrow phrases, you can do all that. But God wants your heart. Amen. 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 But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. I want you to understand something. I want you to see the correlation tonight that healing is the children's bread. He calls healing the children's bread. Let me ask you guys a question. What is bread? Bread is a provision. It wasn't cake. Where's Joyce at? Coconut cream pies? Where's Sue? Sue's not here, I don't think. So. It's, not the, 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 it's, not, it's not the pie, it's not the cake. It was the children's what? Bread. bread. And everybody deserves bread. Everybody, even the, even the little dogs get to eat. Bread. Someone comes to you and says, give me a piece of bread. There's no, because bread is a provision. It's a staple item. Bread is a staple item. So Jesus calls healing a staple item. It's a provision. It's the bread. What are you saying, Pastor Paul? I'm saying this, church. Listen to me. The healing is a staple. It's a provision, right? It's something that Jesus has provided for everybody to enjoy. He said, yeah, but even the, the little dogs eat crumbs from the master's table. Listen, there's enough power in the crumbs to heal you. And we got the whole Wonder Bread loaf. <laughs> right? Right? There's enough in the crumbs to heal us. I think it's interesting because bread, 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 bread. What are you talking about bread? Well, we celebrate this every fourth Sunday of the month here in this church. We take communion. Right? And, 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 and we say, okay, this is the, the, the bread. Right? This is the bread, the, the day that Jesus would trade. He took the bread, he broke the bread. He said, this is my body which is broken for you. See, healing is about the bread. See, I'm just telling you something. Listen, it's also about, the, see, the blood. Come, come on now, the blood, it's important. we got to have the blood. But the gospel, the, 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 the complete total uh, counsel of God is just not about the blood of Jesus, but it's also about the body of Jesus, about the bread and the wine. It's about the juice and the bread. If listen, if 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 salvation was only about the forgiveness of your sins, then why in the world are we eating the bread during communion? Then we shouldn't be eating the bread. Let's just drink the juice. And you don't hear anybody's talking and, and, and complain about the juice, but everybody's discussing whether God. Is a healer. So there's never any controversy about the juice, about the wine, about the blood. The controversy is with the body of Jesus. See, what are you saying, Pastor Paul? If you go back to Exodus, I could preach all night. Listen to me now. In Exodus chapter 12, the Bible talks about the children of Israel coming out of Egypt. And God told him in Exodus chapter 12, he said, you take a lamb and you bring it in on the 10th day of the month and you keep that thing uh, uh, pinned up for four days and you examine that lamb. Oh, come on, there's just so much. Because Jesus came in before his, uh, before his crucifixion, he was examined by the Pharisees, the Sabbath sees the Herodians, he was examined for four days and found without blemish. He said, there's no way, there's nothing wrong with this man. And in Exodus chapter 12, they put up that lamb and they looked at that lamb, Tommy, and they, they examined that lamb and, and, and they watched and made sure there was no blemishes. And then all of a sudden they said, you're going to have a fire and you're going to roast the lamb. You're going to take the blood when you kill it and you're going to put the blood on the door lentils, being covered by the blood, the forgiveness of your sins. 
being, because he said when the death angel comes, he's going to what? Pass over. So judgment won't fall on you. I'm glad that I'm not going to be judged. Come on, somebody. I'm saved. Amen. I'm under the blood, right? But he said, listen here, don't just put the door, don't just put the, the, the blood to the door lentils. You also take and you eat the lamb. You eat all of it. Come on, somebody. He said, you eat all that lamb. And the Bible says in Psalm 105 that he brought them forth out of Egypt with silver and gold. And there was not one feeble person among them. Where did the strength and the healing came? It came through them eating the lamb. What are you saying, Pastor Paul? I'm saying that healing is a provision. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Right? He makes me to what? Why, why, why are you laying down not standing up? Oh, come on. It's Sunday about 3 o'clock. You've got the football game. It's football season. Praise God. you got the football game on. And you just filled your belly up with pot roast and potatoes and carrots. That sounds good, don't it? <laughs> right? And some Sister Schubert rolls with butter dripping off of them. Come on, Peg. Can I get an amen over there? See, when you're full and when you're satisfied, you're laying down. See, Jesus comes to satisfy us. And we start eating the bread. We start drinking the blood. We start becoming one with him. He satisfies our life. He prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemy. I wonder what's on the table. Bread. Bread's on the table. Amen. What are you saying? I'm saying healing is a part of the gospel. And I have shown you that over the last two weeks. Hallelujah. Now go with me real quick over here to uh, Mark chapter 6. You guys all right? All right. Mark chapter 6. Hungry? Who said hungry? I've done preach to hungry. That's a good thing. Let's look in verse 1. And he went out from there and came to his own country. And his disciples followed him. When the Sabbath had came, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him, and that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, and Hoseas, and Judas, and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, in his own house. Verse 5, And he could do no mighty works there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the villages in a circuit teaching. It didn't say that he wouldn't do it said that he couldn't do it because of people's unbelief. Now, what are you saying, Pastor Paul? I'm saying on the table tonight, healing is on the table. Healing is on the table tonight. It is on the table. But what causes me to partake, listen, I can be pulled up to the table. You've been carried to the table of the Lord. It's before you. Come on. Jesus' blood has paid for it all. His body, he has set you at the table of the Lord. And because of that now, it's sitting in front of him. But I've got to partake of the table. I've got to partake. And what will keep you and I from partaking of the table is unbelief. Jesus could do no mighty works there except that he laid his hands on a few sick folk and he healed them. You and I can limit God's healing power through unbelief. Now notice what was Jesus, look here, back here in verse 6. What was Jesus' immediate response after he found out the unbelief was there? It said he marveled because of their unbelief. 
Then he went about the what? Villages in a circuit what? The only, listen, he said, I, listen, they got unbelief. I need to go teach them about what this thing is, what they think this thing's about. I got to go teach them what the word of God says. See, how do you destroy unbelief? By teaching from the Word of God. That's how Jesus understood it. He said they got unbelief. The only way I can get the unbelief out is by going and teaching them the Word of God and what God says. Why? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. I've got to hear God's Word in order for me to believe. Jesus said you shall know the truth and the truth shall what? Make you free. i got to know truth i got to understand truth. The way the enemy keeps us in bondage, the way the enemy comes and deceives us is when we don't know truth. Amen. There are many ways to receive healing. Many. But all require some element of faith in itself. Something. Something. Even if it's just a response of saying yes. First John 5, 4 and 5 says, For whosoever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. What causes, what gives us victory? Our faith. What is faith? It's the ability to believe and to act without demanding proof. This is what faith is. It's the ability to believe and act without demanding proof. To believe, to trust, to place confidence in and total reliance upon God. And you see in Scripture stuff like this. Your faith has made you whole. Be it unto you according to your faith. Jesus needed faith to be able to do this. Well, I've got good gospel news for you. Everybody in this room, if you're born again, you got faith. You got faith. You got faith. I don't care if you've been born again for three hours, three minutes, three seconds. The faith of God was given to you when you got born again. All I got to do is respond. I got to have childlike faith. I need childlike faith. I don't need to have faith in my faith. This is what the Lord was wrecking me with this morning. He said, your, your faith is not in your faith. Your faith is in me. Amen. When you go lay hands on somebody, you lay, it with the, you lay your hands with the faith of Jesus. That's it's not even about your faith. It's about the faith of God that's in you. It's my faith. Just really. Can, do you believe I can do it, Paul? I said, yes, sir. I believe. He said, then go lay hands on people. Go speak the word to people and do it in my faith. In my faith. Hallelujah. Malachi chapter 4 verse 2 it talks about this. That the son of righteousness now shall arise... With healing in his wings. And we could spend the whole 35, 40 minutes talking about that one. The son of righteousness. Now, if you, won't you find that scripture? Oh, there it is. Thank you, Marianne. <laughs> but to you who fear my name, the son. Now, notice, what, look what it is. It's the what? It's the S-U-N. Not the S-O-N, but the, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. This is a metaphor for the Messiah. Now listen, let me ask you guys a question. The sun, we, we sing it, what says? The sun will come out tomorrow. <laughs> sing it, Crystal. <laughs> the sun will come out tomorrow. Tomorrow morning the sun's coming up. Nothing stops that. It's consistent. It will happen. That's right. Are you getting this download now? Are you hearing what I'm saying? The son of righteousness shall rise with what? Healing in his wings. That's right. Healing is a consistent. Listen, Jesus is a healer. Yes, amen. But you might wake up tomorrow morning. We've had some really pretty days recently. But you may wake up tomorrow morning. You might not see the sunrise. Because of the what? There's something blocking it. But does it mean the sun's not rising? Because if you got in a plane, and you got above the clouds, you'd see the what? 
You see the sun. The sun of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. You can be assured tonight, church, that Jesus is a healer. And you and I can hook in and log in and write into that. Amen. I got the password to log in. I got the password to log in. You ain't getting this, are you? I said, I got the password, and you do too, to log into it. And it's called, I'm going to give you my password. You ready? Ready for the password? That's a good one. Wasn't where I'm going. Faith. F-A-I-T-H. Faith. Now. Hallelujah. Are you with me here? So there's three things we got to know tonight to receive and to minister healing. Okay? I'm going to give them to you. Three things that we need to know to receive and to minister healing. Number one, we need to know, and you, this is simple, okay? I've got some kind of earth-shaking revelation tonight for you. You need to know God's will. Now, we've already talked about this. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time. But I want you to go to Hebrews chapter 11 with me. Hebrews chapter 11. <clears throat> know God's will. Hebrews chapter 11. Look what it says in verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Now He's saying right here, without faith, we got to have faith, right? right. All right he's telling you how, to, how do you activate this. Number one, you got to believe that He what? Is. You've got to know God's will. You've got to believe that He is. What is He to you? I mean, whatever you're needing in your life, I believe that you are. You can put it like, you must believe that He is blank. And fill it in. Believe He's the healer. Believe He's the deliverer. Believe He's the, he's the one that prospers me, right? I mean, we can go right on, right? Whatever it is, you've got to believe that He is. He's your peace. He's your joy. Whatever You've got to believe that He is. If I don't know God's will, I will never, ever, ever act on the Word. I need to believe that He is. The second thing He says right here, I must believe that He is, and that He is a what? A rewarder. Which leads me to number two. What is number two? Truth. True, that's number two essential thing that I have to believe or to know. I need to know God's nature. So I, listen, I need to know God's nature. I need to know God's character. And he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. The Bible says God is a healer. He is a deliverer. I believe that he is. I know his will. But I also got to believe and know that he is a rewarder. I have to believe that he is a rewarder. Now in James chapter 1, go over here real quick with me. James chapter 1. Can I get a good amen here? James, flip over. One book. James chapter 1. Look what it says here in verse 5. Very interesting. If any of you lacks wisdom, right? Let him ask of God. Who gives to all liberally. I told you, you got to know his character, his nature. He's a liberal giver. He's, he's, the, he's, the, he's the bread man. He's a liberal giver. You got to know his character. You got to know his nature. You got to know his will, but you got to know his character. He, he, he's a liberal giver. He's a rewarder of those, right? If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. There's that knowing God's will. I ain't going to go to God if I don't believe he can do something for me. I'll never ask God to do anything for me if I don't believe he is, he is who he says he is. Right? He's a rewarder. 
And he, he's given everybody. He says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Now look what it says now in the next verse. But let him ask what? How? In faith. Let him ask in faith with no what? Doubting. For he who doubts is like the wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. You say, well, Pastor Paul, what do I got to believe in? I need to believe that he's the liberal giver. If you look at it in context, if any man lacks wisdom, I know wisdom, it's, it's one thing, but we, we're going to ask God for healing or deliverance or finance to help us in our finances or whatever it is. If any man is lacking in something, let him ask of God. And i got to know that he's a liberal giver. He gives liberally and doesn't go and put me down because I'm asking for it. That's what the word of braideth means. Put you down because you're asking for it. There, you know, there's no, listen, God, if, if, it, if it concerns you, it concerns the Father. If it concerns you, it concerns God. I don't care how small or how big. Listen, if it's a concern to you, it's a concern to Him. He's liberally giving, wanting to give. And I have my faith. I can't doubt in that. Let's go back again. Let me just read it one more time. Up on the screen with us all as we're looking at it. Back to verse. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all what? Liberally and without reproach. And it will be what? Given to him. Verse 6. But, conjunction, junction. What's your function? It connects you back with the next verse. But, let him ask in faith with no what? Doubting. Doubting in what? Doubting in the liberal giver. Doubting him liberally helping you in his will. For he who doubts is like the wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Verse 7. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Faith is required to receive from the Lord. And if I'm not if I don't have faith in his will, I don't have faith, and I don't know that he's a liberal giver, I'm going to be tossed to and fro, and I'm going to be unstable in all my ways. So I need to know God's will, I need to know God's nature. The third thing is this. I need to know God's methods. I need to know God's methods. Alright? So I know God's will... I know his character, renewing my mind to that. Now I need to know how to get this healing power operating. So I need to know God's methods. The first method God uses to heal us is through the word of God. Through his word. Psalm 107 verse 20. God sent his word and healed them. Right? When you're speaking God's word over your life, you're speaking life into you. That's why when you get sick in your body, you need to find you scripture and speak scripture over your life. Listen, I, I could talk about what our, uh, how physicians and uh, how physicians and how divine healing work together. It's very much so. Listen, we're all working for the same cause. Come on, what is the, if you go to the doctor? What is their goal to get you better? What's God's goal? Get you better. I'm not against doctors, okay? I'm not against that. But I'm saying this. we got to put our faith in the Lord. we got to put our faith in Him. Amen. So i got to get some scriptures and start speaking those scriptures over my life. Why? Because Jesus said in John 6, 63, He said, the words that I speak are spirit and they are life. When I'm speaking God's word, it is imparting life, zoe, the God kind of quality of life into me. And the spirit of God that's in me is in living and, and, and making alive my mortal body. The power of the word of God being spoke over your life. That's why you need to get you in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Let every word be established. I get the word of God, start speaking it over my life about my situation. If you're needing healing in your body, get you some scriptures. Get them down on an index card and start speaking the word of God out of your mouth. 
it'll release life into you. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about the power of the Word of God. So what's the method of healing? The Word of God. The Word of God. Hallelujah. Go with, uh, Actually, won't you find this one? Proverbs 4, verse 20. Hallelujah. Speak the Word over your life. God's watching over His Word. Jeremiah 1, 12. God watches over His Word to perform it. God watches over His Word to perform it. Well, how's he going to watch over? When I speak the word of God, he's watching over that word to perform it. Come on, somebody. This is good gospel news. Healing is in the gospel. But listen, i got to have faith. Amen. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not. Oh, sorry. Go to the next one. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them. And what? You know what the word health means right there in the Hebrew? Medicine. For they are life. Talking about this word. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ears into my sayings. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. For they, the words, God's words, are life to those who find him and health or medicine to all their flesh. The word of God is medicine to your flesh. So tomorrow morning, take your medicine. If you're sick, and listen, let me, let me help you. So when I'm on high blood pressure medication, keep taking the high blood pressure medication. I'm not telling you to kick it off to the curb, but I'm telling you this, won't you take the high blood pressure medication with the word of God? If you take an insulin, don't stop taking insulin. Come on, or whatever it is. Whatever it is, or whatever you're taking. I'm not against medicine, but I'm saying take it with the Word of God too. And that thing will begin to live in your body. Come on, somebody. And all of a sudden, they got to take you off the blood pressure medication because it's driving down your blood pressure way too far. You go back, well, you don't think you need this anymore. I don't think you really need to be on high blood pressure medication anymore. We're going to take you off of it. We're going to wing you off of it. What's the power of God working? Because the Word of God is medicine to our flesh. It's the power of the Word of God. How did God create the world? Through His words. So the power, God's Word has power in it. So speak the Word of God over your life. Come on, I can't do this for you. I'm training you. Right here in this house, we train people. This is a training center. Come on, somebody. We come in this place and we get trained. This is almost like the locker room. Amen. I'm going I'm drawing stuff on the whiteboard and I'm giving you the pep talk and giving TL a chest bump every now and then. I'm getting fired up up here. Get, that way we can go back out there and we can do this word. Listen, if this is not true, let's just quit. Let's just go back to the world. I'm being serious. If this is not true, then listen, it's a lie. What are we believe in a lie for? Let's just, let's just be believers and let's believe what the gospel says. I don't, listen, I'm not quitting, okay? I'm just saying, I believe God's word is true. I believe it's true. Either it's true, either it's true or it's not. So let's go do the word. Amen? The word of God. Number two, and let's move on. Hurry, hurry, hurry. The prayer of faith. Prayer of faith. Mark eleven twenty four. 24, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. I believe, I receive, and then I have. So when I pray, I need to pray in faith. Well, how do you pray in faith, Pastor Paul? You pray with the Word. If you don't know the Word, you can't pray. This is the confidence, 1 John 5, 14 and 15. This is the confidence that I have in Him. That if I ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know that we have the petitions that we're desiring of him. I need to know what the will of God is. We go back to the first thing I told you. I got to know the will of God. And if I don't know the will of God, I can't. So what do you pray, Pastor Paul? Open up the Bible and pray it. Just open up the Bible and start praying it. Father, thank you for the word today. Father, I thank you. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. 
Surely he hath borne our iniquities and carried our pains. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. He was wounded. Jesus was wounded for my transgressions and bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes I am healed. Father, thank you that I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. And that's a prayer of faith right there. James chapter 5 up on the screen real quick. Look what it says. If any, is anyone... Among you sick. Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Verse 15. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up and if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. That's prayer of faith. Now listen, man. I need, sometimes I need other people in the prayer of faith with me. Because listen, if I'm pushing against a thousand pound boulder, I need somebody else push it against, against it with me. If one can put a thousand of like what? Two can put ten thousand. Right? So with the prayer of faith, I need the prayer of agreement. Right? And if you're going through a problem, don't, don't sit back there and listen. If you've got an issue, would you please let me know? Send me a Facebook message. Can you pray for me? You're not bothering me. Or won't you do this? We're going to be in our journey groups. And you're going to have problems and situations come up in your journey group. Listen, we want you to be able to share with one. Hey, listen, I need your prayers tonight. I'm, I, I'm sick. I've been battling this for three weeks. And I need, your, I need some prayer tonight. I need a prayer of faith to be released. Can you pray with me? Amen. Prayer of faith. Prayer of faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Number three, the laying on of hands. Mark 16, Jesus said in the Great Commission, you lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. When, you, when hands are laid on you intentionally, I'm saying intentionally being let, hands being laid on you, uh, p- the power of God can be administered, through, administered to your body through the laying on of hands. That's what the scripture says. In Hebrews chapter 6, Apostle Paul says it's a foundational principle of, of the, the elementary principles of Christ. It's one of the foundational principles of Christianity is the laying on of hands. We've got away from that. Maybe not in this church, but across, the, the, across many churches, people don't even, they don't even provide opportunities anymore for people being prayed for. We may go to two services at some point in this, in this church, but I'm telling you something, we will always take time to pray for people. People can stay in the hall and wait. Or come in and just join in and we'll just do two services together. The point is that I'm just saying, we don't know where the Lord's going to take this thing as far as in this building. But the deal is, is this, at the end of the day, people need to be ministered to. People need to be ministered to. It may not be me that's laying on the hands, but it may be somebody up here that's laying on hands. It could be a core group leaders. It could be, it could be people that are altar care teams that are laying hands on people. I, right now, we, I do a lot of that up here, but it doesn't mean that I have to. Listen, you guys a lot of times lay hands on people in their seats. I think this is, ain't about the pulpit anyway. It's about the pulpit and the pew coming together, being on the level and doing what God's called us to do. The laying on of hands. These signs shall follow them that believe. Not the pastor, not the preacher, not the evangelist, the apostle, the prophet. No, it says, listen, the believer. These signs shall follow the believer. If you're a believer in here, you have authority in Christ to lay hands on the sick. Come on, somebody. It just takes 20 seconds of courage. That's all it takes. The laying on of hands. Hallelujah. Number uh, four, the anointing with oil. We notice there in James chapter 5, we read it together. Is any sick among you? Let them pray over him. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith will save the sick. The deal is, is this. There's no special power in the oil. I don't know what that is. My oil, wherever it's at, it's somewhere up here. There it is. I don't know. Get Crisco. I don't, I don't, what kind of, what's some of the olive oil, pure virgin olive oil. I don't know, whatever it is, right? Bertoli. Who, I don't know. It, there's nothing in the oil. It's a point of contact. What it is is that people feel. See, oil is a type or a symbol of the Holy Spirit, the presence of God. 
So when people feel the oil, and there's nothing wrong with this. There's nothing wrong. When they feel the oil, they feel that they have a point of contact. Their faith reaches out and grabs that feeling in a sense and saying, I felt that. There's nothing special about the oil. I mean, some television preacher trying to sell you some special oil from, uh, from Israel. But, but there's nothing special in the oil. It's the prayer of faith that saves the sick, not the oil. But you can anoint people with oil, and we do that here at times, as the Lord directs us. And when it, it's, listen, the power of God can flow through that simple act of obedience. It's a point of contact. Okay, we see it from Scripture. And then the last thing is this. Method. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. What are you saying, Pastor Paul? I'm saying this. The Lord may give a word of knowledge. The Lord may give a word of knowledge. And when I say a word of knowledge, is the Lord wants to heal somebody tonight that has a right ear pain. Whatever. Right? Or God's healing skin conditions tonight. Feel the, feel the Spirit of the Lord saying, God's wanting to heal this. That's a gift. That's, a, that's the gifts of the Holy Spirit. God is initiating it. God is initiating the gifts, and it could be through the gifts of healings. And I said that a minute ago. Let me correct myself on it, because God can do whatever He wants to. Okay, so, I mean, someone could be sitting there not have any faith at all and, and God, because I just, it can happen like that. But at least you had faith enough to come to church, is what I'm saying. <laughs> so I stand corrected tonight. Listen to what I'm saying. God requires faith, but there's, God can do whatever He wants to. I, I listened to a thing, um, it was, maybe it was on an email or a Facebook one, but this guy was teaching, it was in, I don't know what it was, I can't remember it. He was teaching about how healing was wrong. That Isaiah 53, it wasn't meaning physical healing. He had a throat condition that took him out. He couldn't even hardly talk. He could hear his raspy voice. First time he had preached in like a long time. He stood up and was preaching against Isaiah 53. And in the moment, the Lord healed him. And he got wrecked right on the platform. So I stand corrected tonight. But when the gifts of healings are in operation, the gifts of the Spirit, it's, it's being initiated by God. Now, it may require you to respond. If I give a word of knowledge, listen, I want to lay hands on people that are doing, you, you need to respond in faith by stepping out. Okay? Now, I can't, I, I, maybe we should do the teaching on the gifts sometimes, but, but this is the gifts of, and 1 Corinthians 12 talks about uh, the, the nine gifts of the Spirit. You know, the word of knowledge, the discerning of spirits, tongues, interpretation, tongues, prophecy, working of miracles, special faith, gifts of healings. Amen. So this is another way that God ministers healing. Now, let me, let me close with this. Um, when you pray and when you act upon the methods, healing power is administered to your body. All right? Whether you feel something or you don't feel something, healing power has been administered to your body. Come on. If you've had hands laid on you, if you've asked in faith, healing power has been administered to your body. There's only one place in Scripture that Jesus felt power go out of him or someone felt power go into them. And that was the woman with the issue of blood. Okay? Okay? That's the only place. So it tells me this. You may or may not feel something. And I'm going to tell you something. Probably won't feel a thing. I'm not trying to doubt unbelief. I'm just saying. Unless the Lord comes and manifests that right then, a lot of times it happens in a recovery. I'm just trying to be honest with you. So you say, well, Pastor Paul, what do I do now after hands were laid on me? Or I spoke the word over my life, right? Prayer of faith, whatever it is, right? Anointing with oil. What, what do I do now? How do I, how do I maintain it? How do I continue to believe in order for this thing to come to complete fruition in my life? 
There's three things you're going to do. Write these down real quick. Think, talk, thanks. Think, talk, thanks. Think, talk, thanks. The first place the enemy is going to come try to get you is get you to give up on your healing. Nothing happened to you. You didn't feel anything. Right? He'll come and start bringing all the things that's happened in our past. How this didn't happen or that. Come on now. So you have to, you have to get your mind and keep your mind thinking. On what? No, 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 no. I had hands laid on me. No, no, no. I prayed the prayer of faith. No, no, no. I've been speaking the word. And I'm keeping myself, my thought pattern in that realm. I'm thinking upon things that are pure and just and praiseworthy, right? If there's any virtue, if any praise, think upon these things. Philippians 4.8, the P4.8 filter. The P4.8 filter. Apostle Paul talks about in Philippians 4.8. He said, you think upon these things. Not on the negative report. Right? Tony, the healing power of God's working in your body. It's working in your body. Right? And I've got to go and I've got to start thinking. And I've got to see my arm. You've got to see that arm. I, know, I mean, I'm not walking a mile in your shoes, man. Not a step. But I know one thing about it. You've got to see that arm healed. You've got to envision that thing moving. Hallelujah. That's awesome, brother. It's coming. It's coming. You ain't got no cane tonight. Probably Mary, probably Mary Lynn's glad about that. <laughs> Thought he was Zorro. <clears throat> I got to keep my mind on what the word says. And when the enemy starts coming to lie to you, say, no, 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 hold on. I'm thinking upon hands being laid upon me. I'm thinking about myself being healed. And then I'm going to talk. You can think it all you want to, but you better answer those fiery darts with, the, with your words. <clears throat> you know how you quench a thought? By speaking it. Speaking to it. You quench a thought by speaking to the thought. So what you do, you say, okay, no, 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 no. I'm not thinking about this. I am saying this. And I'm speaking my faith out of my mouth and what the Word of God says about my situation. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. So all I got to do is just continue to speak the Word. What do I got to do? What do I do? You wake up and you start thinking about the healing power of God. And you start talking about the healing power of God. Come on. Right? Jack. Right? What's like Jack? Jack's whole and healed. Hallelujah. I, don't, I thank you, Father, that Jack is whole and he is healed. Functioning in capacity, you've ordained it to perfect functioning in his mind. Thank you, Father. Right? Praise God. Come on, man. Come on. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Right? We'll stand and believe it. Think, talk, and thanks. Give thanks for the small victories. And when there's no victory, thanks. Father, thanks. Thanks, I'm healed. Thanks, Father. Thanks, I know the healing power is in me. Thank you. It's working. And you'll keep that healing power activated in your life. And keep it working. Most people never do that. They never do it. In all things, give thanks. It didn't say for all things. It says in all things, you give thanks. I'm closing, I'm done, okay? Close your Bible and see one more scripture and promise. Stand to your feet. I'm done. Stand to your feet. It's 20 after. Oh, boy. Look. You know this. Listen, listen to me. You continually speak. Listen. 
commands your body. Your body has ears. You speak to your body. So I have prayer. Speak to your body. Body, you listen to me. You line up with the word of God. Joints, you line up with the word of God. Come on. Joints, you line up with the word of God. By the stripes of Jesus Christ, I'm healed. So my joints operate like God ordained to function to operate. And the healing power of God is working mightily in my joints in the name of Jesus. There you go. Now you're keeping the healing power of God activated in your life. Now look, first t- that last verse, that last scripture. Yeah, look. Do not neglect the gift that is in you. Now I know he's talking here about a spiritual gift, but he- is healing not a gift? Don't neglect the gift that is in you which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the eldership. I just want you to see, do not neglect the gift, right? Look what it says. How are you not going to neglect it? Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. If you're believing God for healing tonight, let me ask you a question. When was the last time that you meditated on your healing? When was the last time that you really took this real serious and you said, I'm going to meditate on these things and I'm going to give myself entirely to the word of God of healing for my life? I'm asking a question tonight. Because what will happen is when I start giving myself entirely to that, my progress will be seen. Tony, our, your progress is being seen. Jack's progress is being seen. It's evident to all. You just keep meditating on it. Think, talk, thanks. Father, thank you for the word tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the power of the word of God in this room. Your healing power. Man, your healing power. Wherever the word's being preached, Father, there's power. And you confirm the word with signs, Father. Hallelujah. If you need prayer tonight, I want you to lift your hand up real quick. If you need prayer for healing tonight, I want you to lift your hand up real quick. Thank you. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Thank you. All right. What I want you to do, you believers, I want you to look around right now. These people with their hands up. Women go minister to women. Men go minister to men. And I want you to go pray. I want you to do that real quick. Tim, come play something real quick. Let's just do that. Let's pray. Let's pray right there. Whatever it is right there. Find out what's going on with them. And let's pray over them right now. Find out what's, that's fine. Just a few. You, we, you know, just, just as the Spirit leads. I mean, I don't, you don't need to walk around. It's fine. It's good. It's, it's all great. Should have gave that order. It's okay. But find out what's going on with them. And I want you to pray for them right now. I want you to command that body to be made whole. I want you to command that body to be made whole. I want you to tell the pain to leave. Tell the symptom to get out. And release the healing power of God. The Word says we lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So Lord, we believe Your Word tonight and we release the healing power of God right now. As believers, as a family, we release power right now through the word of God and by the stripes of Jesus Christ they're whole and healed you sent your word to heal us thank you God that you're healing right now thank you God thank you Lord we th- give you thanks for Joyce's healing speak to that skin to be made whole in the name of Jesus thank you Lord for your power your anointing your glory manifesting manifesting in the room Lord, we believe your word. We're a church that believes. 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 We walk through it, God. We walk through hell as a church. The enemy tried to get us to give up and give him and come off the wall. But we say no. We say no. We say no as a church. We say no as a body of people. 
thank you Lord for your healing power hallelujah driving out sickness and disease give you glory give you praise tonight God hallelujah and you guys have just received prayer I just want you to give thanks unto the Lord right now because listen according to the scriptures if you've received it by faith if you received it by faith then the healing power of God has been administered to your body according to the scripture healing power virtue power anointing has been released right now and it's active right now in your body so give God thanks for it give God thanks for your healing give God thanks for it give him thanks for what he's done healing is a spiritual thing it really is you've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places so you get it out of the spirit into the natural through the words word the words build bridges from the natural to the supernatural that's why God sent his son the word and he bridged the natural and the supernatural with his son the word so the way that the word the supernatural is hooked into it's through the word through words so thank God for your healing hallelujah check them out check yourself out you can check it out check it out check it out do something you couldn't do before sometimes that happens you can go and you can you can see measurable results it doesn't matter if we see nothing at all we know the healing power of God has been administered and we leave out of here thanking talking and giving thanks hallelujah father we thank you for tonight we give you glory and give you praise for your goodness and your mercy